The Leviathan 2 was the largest and probably most familiar whale watching boat in a community that's full of them. The company says it had done this route twice a day, every day for 20 years, and the skipper had 18 years of experience. Yet Sunday afternoon, the trip turned deadly in an instant. Whether a hidden rock or a large wave or something else caused the Leviathan 2 to tip, it appeared to happen so fast that there was no mayday call. Its hull sticking out of the water near Vargas Island left no obvious clue as to what happened. No, no, we'll, we'll make time for some of you. Today, our camera was out with searchers who were still looking for a missing passenger. Those are kind of life jackets that are from the boat, eh, right? Yep. Clarence Smith was the first on the scene last night in his boat, and he recalls in harrowing detail what he saw. So we went to get the people in the water first, um, three one of them. Uh, one guy was clinging onto the boat. We picked him up first, and then I heard these voices in the water. Two ladies uh, clinging to each uh, other, about 100 feet away from us. So we went and picked them up. Smith says he heard other passengers yelling from some nearby rocks, and then saw others in a life raft. So we went to the life raft and picked up another 10 Anybody? people out of there and put them in my boat. For the rescuers, it was clearly a traumatic, emotional experience. Same with the ship's owners. Jamie Bray started Jamie's whaling station more than three decades ago. Traumatized, I think, would be uh, an appropriate word. 17 years ago, another one of Bray's whale watching vessels got swamped by a wave in almost the same location, killing two people. But he says that boat was a much smaller Zodiac, and he is at a loss to explain this. The Leviathan's 20 meters is considerably larger than the other ones. It's, it's Transport Canada licensed every year. Uh, it has all its certificates. There were more than enough life jackets for everyone on board, but people aren't required to wear them on a vessel this size. Today, people left small memorials at the dock and struggled to come to terms with the loss of life. It was awful, yeah. I woke up this morning and first, just sort of an empty feeling in your, in your gut and just uh, hoping that maybe there's more survivors. This afternoon, the RCMP dive team arrived with its gear as investigators started their search for answers. Most of what we know about the Britons who died has come from BC's coroner's office, that the youngest was 18 and the oldest person was in their 70s. There's going to be a very large community gathering here tonight for everyone in Tofino.